I would like to welcome you to the press conference after the Berlin Agriculture Minister's Conference taking place within the framework of the four-day program GFFA. I would like to welcome the Federal Minister Jem Özdemir, who was the host today, as well as Marie-Claude Bibot, the Canadian Minister of Agriculture, and at the same time, she's co-chair of OECD, as well as Janusz Wojciechowski, the EU Commissioner for Agricultural Policy. So, this is it as regards organizational matters. You can ask questions here, but please tell us your name briefly, and then you can ask your questions. And now I give the floor to the Federal Minister. Thank you very much. I would also like to extend a very warm welcome to my colleague from Canada, Marie-Claude Bibot. We are closely cooperating within the framework of OECD and I would also like to welcome our EU Commissioner, Janusz Wojciechowski. We are closely collaborating with him in many fields, in particular when it comes to solidarity with Ukraine. We are meeting here against a dramatic backdrop as regards GFFA. We all agreed that we are faced with several crises at the same time. On the one hand, the crisis which uh, we will be facing in the next few years and decades, the climate crisis, and then in addition to that, the disappearance of species, the extinction of species, if you like, and then finally Putin's horrible war of aggression against Ukraine accelerating the downward spiral. So today we have a growing number of people going hungry worldwide to day 828 million people. More than 2 billion people don't have safe access to sufficient food. We are in the middle of a global food crisis. And as you know, the international community has made a major promise to end global hunger by 2030. And we need to live up to that. And until 2030, there are only eight harvests left. The time is pressing. And this is why we need viable and pragmatic solutions. And this is why. We've met here today for the Berlin Agriculture Ministers' Conference. The format is very successful. Many people said this is the Davos of Berlin or the Munich Security Issues Conference when it comes to global food security. And inclusiveness is another topic here. We are talking with the countries of the global south. We are not talking about them. And Berlin sends a clear signal to the world. We, the agriculture ministers, who are responsible for feeding the world together with the international organizations, we all want to transform the food systems aiming at the right to food to finally realize the right to food. And this year's motto of GFFA, um, Food Systems Transformation, a worldwide response to multiple crises, this is a topic which we needed to tackle. And we all agree that these uh, issues do not stop at national borders. We need to think global here. And we need to have a dialogue on an equal footing. And thus, we adopted a final communique. And let me remind you once again that our target is a climate change of a maximum of 1.5 degrees. And we clearly supported that. The farming sector can only be successful and make a contribution to food security if the topics of climate biodiversity are taken into account. The whole planet needs to be healthy and agriculture needs to make that choice. So we all agreed our agri-food systems are to be sustainable and crisis-proof. This is what we want to do. This means we need a farming sector with more climate change mitigation, more climate adaptation, a stop to deforestation, the conservation of biodiversity, and an efficient use of pesticides and fertilizers. All participants uh, adopted this within the framework of the communique today because also the countries of the global south have a right to more sustainability and healthy ecosystems. This is why the transfer of knowledge is of utmost importance here. And let me tell you that it's not possible that the know-how uh, can 
as regards plant protection projects can only be conveyed by those who earn money with that. This is why we, the countries, must do something within the framework of the civil society, within the framework of our commitment. This means that we need to have a close look at small-scale farmers. They feed more than half of the world. And we also know without uh, empowering women, we won't be able to achieve sustainable development. This is also addressed in the communique. And another point, we finally have to get rid of high food losses. FIO calculated that if we halved food waste and losses, we uh, were able, we would be able to feed all the people in the world. So we all must make a contribution to avoid food waste and losses. We can only do so together. And this is why there are three of us here. My colleague Marie-Claude Vibo as the OECD co-chair, Janos Wojciechowski representing the European Union. And I'm deeply convinced if we develop more on a global scale, if we intensify our partnership dialogue on an equal footing, then we will be able to have a long-term effect as regards our support. And just to give you an example, we must build grain silos instead of uh, predominantly uh, shipping sacks of or bags of cereals or grain. This is to say we don't want to leave this up to authoritarian countries. We as democracies need to take action together. We don't want to preserve our knowledge uh, in our own countries. Agricultural policy can be a game changer if we do all this. And finally, let me tell you something about the rally which took place during the lunch break. The farmers who demonstrated outside for fairer and more sustainable agricultural sector were there. I listened to them and I talked to them and they had specific calls specific demands, six demands which were addressed to us and when I read these demands and read our declaration then I can see that there are things which we have in common. I think this is a good sign for our communique that we are really up to date here and thus I think we can applaud each other and say uh, also on behalf of my colleagues we are not on our own in our governments we have our cabinets um, we would like to decide some things on our own we would like to have a veto right sometimes but uh, we are in charge of having broad alliances too and this is an appeal to our colleagues in the governments we need to work together to have a more coherent approach in order to finally re realize the right to food Mrs. Bibo. Bonjour à tous. Thank you, Minister Ozdemir, dear Commissioner. It's an honor for Canada to be here with you and be part of this vital discussion over the past few hours. I believe that Canada has a lot to share. With, we have decades of experience in developing a sustainable, innovative, and productive agriculture sector. In November, I was honored to co-chair the meeting of the OECD Ministers of Agriculture in Paris. There, we launched a triple challenge. One, to feed a growing population. Two, to meet the challenge of the climate crisis and extreme weather. And three, to ensure that farmers and workers along the whole supply chain can earn a fair income from their work. Today in Berlin, we continued, we continued that discussion with a unified response to the serious threats to global food security. Sorry. First and foremost of these in Russia, <coughs> of these is Russia's brutal aggression against Ukraine. Canada fully supports the GFFA ministerial declaration and its condemnation of Russia's brutal and illegal attack on Ukraine. The war continues to amplify the effects of the pandemic, disrupting supply chains, increasing food and agricultural input prices, and deepening inequalities. 
Canada also fully supports initiatives to help embattle farmers in Ukraine to export their grain to the world, especially to countries facing food shortages. That includes initiatives by the United Nations, Turkey, the European Union, and others to keep the grain moving out of Ukraine through the Black Sea ports, as well as through rail, river, and border crossings. With our third largest grain crop on record last year, and our commitment to sustainability and innovation, Canadian farmers continue to feed the world in a time of global uncertainty. Canada is now seeking partners with the aim of launching a new fund to drive global collaboration and investment in wheat research. The fund will be targeted to countries in Africa and the Middle East that are most vulnerable to supply chain disruptions and increasing heat and drought. It will support the development of wheat varieties and practices that will help them to increase both production and resilience to climate change. To help address price vol volatility, especially in most vulnerable nations, Canada agrees that the G20 Agricultural Market Information System, AMIS, must have the resources it needs to provide timely market information. This will help government and industry to take targeted action to strengthen food security. This year, Canada has more than doubled its annual support of the Agricultural Market Information System. And I encourage other nations to join us in supporting this vital initiative. Le Canada fait écho de l'appel des ministres. Notre système... Canada is taking up the appeal of minister. Our food system must must be equitable, inclusive, and based on science and its laws. Climate crises come dr like droughts and floods are uh, becoming more and more common. And Canada wasn't spared in the last years. And these uh, extreme events means that we need a solid network of partners in order to help the producers to cushion off the effects of climate change. The we are continuing to work with farmers uh, based on the COP27 and 15 work in order to um, have carbon sequestration and conserve biodiversity. As Canada's first ever woman Minister of Agriculture, I am dedicated to bringing more women and young people into leadership roles. To transform our food systems, we need to bring everyone at the table. That's the only way to drive real change. In closing, I want to thank Minister Ozdemir for welcoming us in Berlin and for leading this vital discussion today. Thank you. We leave Berlin with a renewed resolve uh, with a renewed resolve to work together to seek transformative solutions for productive sustainable and resilient agriculture and food systems thank you commissioner thank you very much first of all i'd like to to thank and to congratulate uh, my colleague our colleague minister uh, Özdemir for and uh, german german government berlin for organizing uh, this uh, very important conference, which was opportunity to uh, exchange our views, our vision, uh, what should be our answer for the, at the global level for the global challenges, which we have. Uh, three years ago, I was uh, uh, first and uh, last time before in the Grüne Woche in, in Berlin. And uh, at that time, there, one, on, there was only one important challenge, which was the climate and uh, risk for the agriculture because of uh, natural disasters, climate uh, events. But now we have experience after two years uh, a pandemic, um, COVID pandemic crisis, and now this uh, very dramatic situation after Russian illegal unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. It's, uh, 
uh, four words uh, characterizes that uh, our debate, our discussion, and uh, the final, very good final document, which is the first is solidarity, and solidarity with, with Ukraine. At the first time at the global level, I could hear that such uh, 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 clear signal that uh, we are all in favor of Ukraine, we support Ukrainian farmers, heroic uh, fight of the Ukrainian nation, and uh, it was no doubt that uh, our uh, obligation is to, to support Ukraine. First time I could hear such, such strong signal to support Ukraine, which is in European Union, it was uh, always, yes, during the meetings in, uh, inside the European Union, but at the, at the global level, this is very important signal, and that's uh, it. <laughs> only for this, it was worthy to organize this meeting, but not only, only, only for, for this signal. The second is security, food security, which is the ver very important. Uh, 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 we see after these lessons uh, uh, in last years how important food security is, and also that it is some reflections for the for our policy common agriculture policy, you know that the uh, European uh, Commission decided to make some correct, correctness uh, in, in, uh, for, uh, this in our policies, like restriction, uh, uh, creating risk to reduce production was uh, temporarily suspended, like uh, non-productive areas and, uh, and uh, mandatory crop rotation, which is, of course, very important for the future, but in the long term, um, uh, uh, could be uh, could be have negative impact for the food security, and it was decision that temporarily it should be sus suspended. Food security, of course, to support Ukraine. It also not the soli not only solidarity with, with Ukraine and Ukrainian people, but also our action for the food security at the global level. The solidarity lanes they were very important uh, for Ukraine to. Uh, allow to export their products, but first of all, it was uh, action for the and contribution for the um, uh, food security at the, at the global level. I remember the, the discussions uh, just after the beginning of the war when, to, when uh, um, Ukrainian export was almost fully blocked. Uh, now uh, we have the, the export from Ukraine returned to the to the volume bef before the war. Uh, and uh, this is thanks uh, Black Sea Roads and first of all, solidarity lanes by uh, territory. First of all, uh, it was effort uh, of uh, neighboring countries, Poland, uh, uh, Romania, Hungary, but generally all, all European Union. The third, uh, the third word is uh, stability. We need to ensure um, stability for our farmers, because there will be no security, no food security without the farmers and stable perspective for them. We discuss a lot of about the small farmers. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of small farmers in European Union. The most uh, dramatic signal from the census in uh, European agriculture, uh, 2010, 2000, comparing the situation, 2010, 2020, we lost three million farms, especially small and uh, medium-sized family farms, and this process should be stopped. We need to, to maintain the, the, the small-scale fam small family farming, and uh, it was a lot of discussion because this is the global challenge. We have this challenge in European Union and, and also in at the, at, the, at the global level. Uh, young farmers, this is for the stable future for agriculture to support young farmers uh, is also very important. In the reform common agriculture policy, we have instrument to strengthen support for uh, uh, young farmers and to improve generational renewal in, in European agriculture. And the fourth, the fourth word also is sustainability, sustainable development of our uh, agriculture and I, it was uh, a pleasure, uh, pleasant to, to hear, and uh, it was nice to hear that this is also the common vision at the global level, that, uh, food, that we need um, uh, to make our agriculture more friendly for environment, 
for climate, but at the same time to make our, our, our agricultural policies more friendly for farmers, of course. And uh, this is, uh, uh, I, I can, we can say that this is the common vision that uh, sustainability is absolutely necessary for the uh, uh, food security in the long, ter long term perspective, for the food security for, for next generations. In uh, European Union, we uh, have now the new common agricultural policy started uh, 1st of January this year with many elements to make agriculture more sustainable, like uh, conditionality, like uh, uh, eco schemes, uh, environmental measures uh, in the second pillar of the common agricultural policy. We will spend, uh, according to the strategic plans, more than 300 billion euro uh, during the next five years. Three, 307 billion euro, exactly. And more than 40% of this amount will be spent for the action, uh, uh, on, uh, action for climate, for environment. But uh, incentives for the farmers. The eco schemes, the system of eco schemes, first of all, is uh, this is the system which incentivizes farmers uh, for good uh, agricultural practices like carbon farming, agroecology, animal welfare improvement. So this uh, big progress uh, uh, about the animal welfare in the new reform, the common agricultural policy. Uh, I think that uh, this is good direction to ensure food security for our society, stability for our farmers, and sustainability for our environment and climate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Minister Bibo. Um, we have a question from a journalist from the first German television channel. You have the floor. There is unfortunately no microphone, so the interpreters are unable to translate the question. Sorry, so once again. Um, Frau Ministerin, braucht es neue Handelsabkommen vor allem? There is a trade agreement with Africa which shows that it, does it show that it is worthwhile dealing with democracies rather than autocratic states? And the Ukrainian president said that Ukrainian ships are blocked by Russia in the Bosporus. Do you also consider this to be a problem and how can you solve this? So most members uh, condemned the war, but not all members assembled here condemned the war. So are you deceived, are disappointed? a trading country, particularly in the agricultural sector. We're a big producer, but also a big importer. Uh, and I think it is important, having been the Minister of International Development for three years and a half, I know how important it is to support uh, African countries, and uh, not only in terms of trades, but also in terms of technical assistance to allow them to, to strengthen their own capacity. And this is one reason why we are looking for partners to invest in a research on wheat, wheat that will be uh, developed in a way that it will be more resilient, better adapted to the local conditions. So it will also strengthen their, uh, their uh, internal, their domestic uh, food security. Herr Kommissar. Commissioner. Odpowiem w moim ojczystym języku polskim. We all condemn what Russia is doing, not only when it comes to the Black Sea blockade, but also in general. The criminal war what Russia does when they try to destroy the agricultural potential or when they try to unleash famines or malnutrition. This is not surprising. I am a 
Polish national, a country that has a particular national experience, but that does not only affect Poland, but also other countries. And Eastern European countries are very much aware of Russia's imperialist policies. And it's not surprising that food and attrition are used as a weapon, and therefore these uh, land lanes are so important, uh, which have worked during the first months of the war and which complement the other export paths. Let me remind you that in December, when the Marine Corridor was working, still half of Ukrainian exports were transported via land. This is 53%. And of them, 7 million tons, that is food exports from Ukraine, were food exports, and 6.6 was tons, million tons were grain. And most of it was transported via the Black Sea, but a lot was also transported on land. And it's important that these transport routes work. Sasha Mauer from the German Press Agency also has a question. No, the question was withdrawn. So Russia wasn't invited, Russia, China didn't want to come. South Africa um, canceled its participation on short notice because of internal problems. And if you look at the guest list, we have 70 representatives here. And this communique really clearly condemned the Russian war of aggression. And I am not exaggerating when I say that following the UN, this is the most comprehensive body where, including countries of the global south, such a decision such a resolution was taken. So thank you very much to all the negotiators uh, who fought about every word in the background. And of course, we use the GFFA and the conference to talk about the Ukraine, how we can help with the, the solidarity lanes, how we can export the cereal, how we can tackle next year's harvest, or this year's harvest. Uh, for this, uh, we'll have a meeting with the most important partners in Ukraine. So there are many activities here in the margins of the conference. So Mr. Meyer from the German press conference, I would like to ask something about exports. Minister Özdemir, you expressed a critical view of the consequences of exports from Europe for people in Africa. Do you translate this to the German agricultural sector? Do you think that German exporters should reduce their meat exports to agriculture? So, and Commissioner, how do you see the German export orientation of the German agriculture? Well, we also have scientific information, especially when it comes to poultry and milk. We have a problem because in some cases, domestic Africa, African markets are, that, that the imports of these products are cheaper than the domestic products, and I can't, uh, discuss it so it goes away, but we have to deal with this problem. We are looking into this matter. We need to talk about it. Also, uh, when it comes to the um, structure of agriculture, Europe has to focus on the quality of its agriculture, and therefore we are also restructuring our livestock sector. Commissioner.
When we talk about EU investments in order to solve food problems in the world, these problems are still very acute. And the exploitation of food experts and the moment of blockading Ukraine ex Ports and Ukraine still is a major exporter of grain into the Middle East and into Africa. And these supplies, these deliverers still take place, but the EU also is a major exporter of food to the world. Actually, it's the biggest exporter of food because the volume of food exports in 2021 was 184 billion euros and the importation was 122. For 2022, we do not have any figures yet. And this is as it should be. We support our European agricultural sector and we don't want to exclude any products, but we also want our agricultural production to be as sustainable as possible in order to have a high quality of products such as meat and other animal products. Our farmers are taking great strides and the European Union is supporting them. And of course, uh, food supplies are one thing, but when it comes to food securities on continents where it is particularly at risk, for instance, in Africa, it's important that the production on the ground is being developed so that you know how to support them, so that the technologies are made available. We also cooperate to this effect, and the cooperation of the European Commission European Union with the African Commission is also very intense, also at the level of the member states. It is the EU's responsibility to continue these export ports. We have high quality foods which should be supplied to the entire world. Thank you. Uh, now the lady from Eurotif. Yes, thank you. A question to the two ministers, Mrs. Bibo, Mr. Özdemir. Recently, it has been said by players inside the EU that if we tried to increase sustainability standards in food production and also animal welfare standards, then we would have to apply these standards to other products too, so, so mirroring clauses, if you like. And there's a deforestation law where this has already been started. We say we only import products where we can show that no deforestation has been used in the process. Do you support this approach or do you have a critical view here that you could um, no longer have trade partners here or that small-scale producers in African countries can't act according these lines? Mrs. Bibo, how do you see this when it comes to trade and the access to the European market? This could be made more difficult this way. And then you also mentioned, uh, Commissioner, the solidarity lanes of the EU in the neighboring countries in Poland too. There are many voices criticizing that um, shipments from Ukraine stay in the country, displacing producers on the ground. Are you concerned about this? Thank you. Thank you. These were many questions, Mrs. Dam, so please give short answers if possible. I think we are uh, very aligned in terms of our objective to have a sustainable agriculture. And I can assure you that in Canada we are for a long time, but even, even more now. We are investing $1.5 billion in agri-environmental um, uh, incentives for our farmers. Uh, they are really committed. So I think we are very aligned in terms of objective, but when it comes to trade, it's important to stick to science, to stick to the rules, and to give ourselves flexibility in the manner, in the way we achieve these objectives, because our environment is really different 
when we are in Canada, in the, in the western Canada, in the prairies, uh, the grassland, the prairies are very different than if you compare to another part of Canada and even more another part of Europe. So let's have, uh, we, we definitely share the same objectives in terms of protecting the environment and being sustainable, but we have to give ourselves flexibility and the means to, ch to achieve these objectives. Uh, let me continue in a nutshell. So this is one of the reasons why we closely cooperate with Canada when it comes to the EU, because we are a community of values. We believe in democracy and accountability, the rule of law, because Canada, as well as the European Union, is marked by that. And this is why we will be taking the next step with CETA. And we've agreed on this too. As regards the conversion of animal husbandry in Germany, as you know, this has been discussed for some time in Germany. We had the Borchert Commission uh, named after a former agriculture minister under Helmut Kohl because we have problems in Europe, problems that um, animal keepers um, go out of business, um, family farms which were in business for generations have to give up their activities and only the big ones can survive in this sector and so we would like to do a lot here and in Germany we will be uh, trying to achieve this aim but Commissioner Wojciechowski also knows that in Brussels we are also advocating European rules so that we'll have a level playing field and one of the points where the Commission promised that there will be proposals shortly is where we can avoid that market disadvantages might crop up in addition to the animal welfare label, a uh, European label of origin. I think uh, this is in the interest of the Polish farmers, of the French farmers, in the interest of German farmers. So it's in the interest of all farmers in Europe so that we can see that this is not only about the services of our farmers, but that we can also see where the products come from. And we uh, would like to be, some would like to be even more precise relating to the regions. So I'm confident that Brussels will act uh, in line with that, that we will have not only an animal welfare label, but also a label of origin. origin. This would help us a lot. Let's come back to a question which, not, which was not directly addressed to me. We intensively cooperate with our trade partners uh, coming from third countries. Canada is an excellent example of this. So we are trying to achieve a level playing field when it comes to standards and quality requirements on a mutual level as regards foods, foodstuffs, uh, but in addition to that, the European Union has the highest standards worldwide when it comes to food safety and food quality. And this is why we are trying to lay this down in our trade agreements to guarantee this through our trade agreements on a mutual basis. This also includes the rules of WTO. The EU is the largest exporter of foodstuffs and this is why we are interested in uh, preserving trade and in not um, creating barriers to trade on the global markets. In particular, as regards the most recent trade agreements, for instance, with New Zealand, here we have the highest standards and full mutuality, reciprocality. Uh, there is now an agreement with Australia which is being negotiated. So at EU level, this is very much taken into account. But when it is about the question of imports and certain distortions in the various member states, including Poland, yes, I can confirm this. We are observing the impact of imports from Ukraine into the EU. and imports do not have a negative impact in the EU on the whole, but there are some regional um, threats, difficulties because of 
higher imports coming from Ukraine, the stores that have been filled, and this has its effect on the world market. The prices have dropped a little bit. Regardless of the situation in Ukraine, we've always had these fluctuations on the global markets. And this is a problem for some countries. The largest country might be Poland, as you've just heard. We are working at that, how to solve this problem without creating disadvantages as regards trade relations with Ukraine. And we would also like to help farmers who are affected by these higher imports. For instance, between May to December 2022, the European Union imported more than 10 million tons of grains from Ukraine, and most of it went to three countries, Poland, Romania, and Hungary, so neighboring countries. The largest importer was Spain, but there are no problems at all because there is a large animal husbandry sector and this grain is used as feedstuff there. In addition, in the EU, the, the maize harvest was lower in 2022, 27 million less, 20 million tons less, and thus there is more security required here when it comes to food. There will be a Council of Agriculture Ministers on the 30th of January, and there we will be discussing ways of how to improve the situation of farmers on the ground there. For instance, one solution could be to make use of public support. so that we use the crisis reaction framework to assist farmers to act outside the respective limits and farmers who are affected by the Russian aggression in Ukraine could be helped here. Yeah, there might be a crisis reserve too. Part of it might be given to farmers who are mostly affected by that. And there are, of course, also the economic consequences of this situation. And these farms have to suffer from that. And we will also be hearing the position of the member states on the 30th of January. Yes, there are regional problems in some countries that some farmers have to bear certain economic effects because of the importation of cereals from Ukraine. But this is surely a, a 